Scene one was all about the cadet arriving at the research facility. This first shot shows the cadet ship that I built and that I obviously was planning on doing some green screening. My favorite Lego space set from when I was a kid was the space cruiser set from 1978, so I decided to make the cadet ship in a similar style. I figured that would help the ship look older when compared to the 33rd century ship that PwC was designing. This shot shows what would have been the cadet ship landing on a landing pad at the research facility. From the frame on the right, you'll notice that I built the entire set, but instead of using a special effect to show the cadet ship landing, I just used this still frame to open the film. If you look closely, you can see a small scale version of the cadet ship sitting on the landing pad on the left hand side. Here's a close up of the cadet ship landing and the full scale landing pad I built complete with landing lights. This storyboard illustrates how the ship's hatch opens, which happens to be exactly how the old Lego set ship opened as well. In fact, the gray wing pieces, the blue decal pieces, and the transparent yellow pieces are all original pieces from my old set. I imagine this shot of the cadet climbing out of his ship would have been one of my most challenging shots to animate. This shot would have shown the cadet walking from his ship to the facility's airlock. I never actually got around to building the airlock exterior. Scene two consisted of the cadet walking the halls of the facility looking for Buchanan's office. In this photo, you can see the only functioning door that I built on this set. In the film, I used both sides of this one door seen from both the hallway and from inside Buchanan's office. None of the other doors that you see in this hallway set actually open. You'll notice that I numbered my shots as 10, 20, 30, etc. That way, if I realized I needed a shot in between shot 10 and 20, I could just number it 15. I got this numbering idea from way back when I was a kid learning basic programming. Shot 30 was the cadet approaching the hallway corner and then stopping to read an overhead sign for directions. Shot 50 was the cadet walking around the corner after he'd read the sign and had figured out which way to go. Had I filmed this, I would have filmed both of these shots all at once to avoid having to set up the camera and the lighting twice. This was the very first shot I filmed for Crisis Reverted before we had decided to scrap scenes one and two. I went to a lot of trouble to build the hallway ceiling and ceiling lights just for this one shot. The gap between Lego plates on the ceiling has white crepe paper sagging through it and then bright lights from above shining down through the crepe paper to imitate fluorescent ceiling lights. Both the text on the overhead sign and the Rubino's pizza poster were added in post-production using PaintShop Pro. I had been working a lot on the script over pizza at Rubino's I thought it would be cool to add a reference to them into the film. If I remember right, we hadn't even decided on the cadet's face yet when I filmed this shot. I really liked the look of this shot and was pretty bummed that I couldn't put it in the film.